Well, welcome to Focus Today, and I'm your host, Perry Atkinson. It's always a delight to have Patrick Doyle in the house. He's a counselor that heads up Veritas Counseling, and uh, well, today's one of those special days that we're going to be talking about a subject that I'm sure is going to spark some interest and maybe even some response. And uh, if you want to join the conversation, in a little bit, we'll open up the phone lines and we'll let you uh, talk to Patrick without an appointment. How about that? <laughs> and if you want to remain anonymous, we'll certainly respect that as well. You may want to jot the phone number down. It's 541-776-5368. That is the local number in and around Medford. Toll free for those of you outside the immediate area, and that's 1-800-373-5368. So uh, you may want to join the conversation along the line here. How you doing, bud? Good doing to see good. you. Good to see you. And uh, as always, you select topics that are brain scratching. <laughs> um, and how did you want to frame this? Well, so are you living out of the truth or are you living out of a lie? Now, when you say that, most people would say, oh, I live out of the truth. Okay, but all of us know people in our lives who are, let's say, less than honest, and we know that. Um, there's people that we know are maybe um, hypocritical or disingenuous. Everybody's seen it. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the things I wanted to discuss today is in many of the situations that I deal with, Perry, if people would follow their instincts, their spiritual, their spiritual um, I don't know, like the conviction they get that's sort of small or subtle, and then they rationalize it away. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. You're in a situation and somebody says something and your spirit says, oh, I don't know about that. And then as soon as you start to feel that, then you start to mentally do the gymnastic of, oh, well, because, and you know, maybe I'm just being too, and what about, and I should have, and blah, blah, blah. and next thing you, know, you talk yourself out of it. But that's God's way of protecting us from situations that are dangerous. How do you test that? Well, that's a good question. And I think the way you test it is by following it. Mm -hmm. And so you build confidence in your uh, spiritual conviction. Some people call it your gut, your instinct. But in the church, a lot of times, I think that we are, we are told to not pay attention to that. We're not told it outright, but we're told to make sure we have the truth first. Well, you, you and I both know that through many circumstances, at least in my life, my salvation has been me trusting my instincts not my knowledge, because mm -hmm. there's a bunch of things I can't know. I don't know the future. I don't know what's going to happen later. But I do know that, ooh, I'm feeling something about that. I need to pay attention to it. <clears throat> I've walked through so many situations, Perry, with churches where there's been leadership that have gone astray. And in most situations, when the, the leadership of a church is being duplicitous, living two lives, <clears throat> it's never, you know, one day I was fine, and the next day I wasn't. It's always a long-term pattern, and the way that it develops and the way that people get to that place is no one ever calls them on it. No one ever calls them on the little gut check they get about what they said or how they said it. They rationalize, they minimize, they justify, they deny. So what that does is it puts me in danger because the person who's being duplicitous, I don't call out on it, and now I'm believing that they're not duplicitous when they are, it doesn't give that person a chance to repent because I don't bring it to the surface. The scripture says we confess our sins one to another so that we might be healed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I don't believe there's any healing without confession. So that means we have to be aware of what the problem is. Yeah, right. But so, many, so much of the time what we're doing is we're living to smooth over. Are we prepared to have someone tell us <clears throat> that you're not living the truth? No. Not generally, and, that's, and I, that's the other reason why I believe in the, in the church, what we should do is have the safest environment on the planet. The church should be the safest place for this kind of stuff because, A, <clears throat> we're loved by God. Mm -hmm. He says, I, I know everything, son. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I took care of it. I poured out my wrath on myself to pay for your sins. So you're free as opposed to being locked up and afraid. So... When, when we go into the church, it should be a safe place to say, you know, this is what I'm struggling with. Or, you know, I was thinking this, but what I find over and over again in my counseling office and many situations I get involved with with churches is that it grows to a, a, a critical mass point because there is no honesty. There is no confi confession. There is no, hey, that really bothered me. Or wh where are you going with that? It's always trying to make nice. And what I'm saying is when you're doing that, it's not living in the truth. It's living in a lie. And that always, what is, uh, who's the father of lies? Yeah. Satan. Mm -hmm. And what are his goals for you? Steal, kill, and destroy. 
So if we live in a lie, we're not going to head toward feeling better about ourselves. We're not going to head toward, you know, understanding God better. What we're going to do is we're going to start becoming idolatrous and trying to control the outcome. All right. Wow. <clears throat> Living in a lie. Um, yeah. And, and all, and let me just say this, Perry. All of us on some level are lying to ourselves a little. Right. And so none of us are living in abject truth. I mean, that's heaven. <laughs> yeah. But so can we move the percentages? Yeah. So, so it's not about perfection because I don't think that exists. So that's why I really encourage people. You have to have relationships in your life that are safe enough for you to be able to tell the truth without fear of judgment, reprisal, backstabbing, gossip, kicking you to the curb. And what I see over and over again, particularly in men in leadership, they get into this bubble where they have no way to be honest. And that leads to secrecy, and it leads to holding things in, and then those things slowly move in a bad direction. Even if the guy never does anything, he becomes miserable. I've seen it over and over and over again. Uh, so what are we doing to ourselves as believers when we know deep down in our gut we are living maybe a lie mm -hmm. or we're not coming clean yeah. with an issue or something. Mm -hmm. And I think we all struggle with that. And that, and I'm not talking about things that, uh, that we know that we keep on the table before God. Right. But what concerns me is, uh, and you've done enough counseling, I've been involved in enough ministry to know, we know that there's a person that's not right. Uh -huh. Something's wrong. Right. But they covered up with so, many, so much Christianese yes. and religion. Yes. Right. that you kind of go, well, they must be okay because yeah. God's not zapping them. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I guess it's okay. <laughs> but you know deep down in your spirit something's not right here. Yes, and, w and what I'm saying, Perry, is we have to pay attention to that. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've sat in my office with someone, and I've, I've talked. I've talked to um, various people in the family. I've talked to, you know, I've got all this collateral information about the fact that they're not okay. And everybody knows it. So they finally come into the office, usually through some leverage. Somebody's leveraged them in there. And they'll sit down, and they'll look you right in the eye. And in spite of all the collateral information from all these other people, they'll look you right in the eye and say, oh, no, me and God are, me and God are in good standing. Mm -hmm. Well, what are you going to do with that? How are you going to argue with me and God being in good standing? And when then you do say, hey, uh, well, you know, all these people don't believe that and they see this behavior that you're doing that says that you're not in good standing. And the person says, well, they're wrong. It's not, it's not, it's not me, it's them. They're just misunderstanding me. They don't understand what God's called me to. Blah, okay. blah, 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 blah. All right, let me ask you this. <clears throat> Why then are we so hardened that when a majority of the evidence Mm -hmm. and the testimony says mm -hmm. something's wrong, mm -hmm. we become so hardened that says, no, they're wrong, I'm right. Mm -hmm. I mean, where is the spiritual consciousness to say, well, wait a minute, maybe me and God need to have a meeting on this, you know? Well, so, so, right, so when God's Spirit is in someone, Jesus said, I'm sending you the Spirit for two reasons, to convict you of sin, what's right and what's wrong. I think in that is the confirmation of truth. The Spirit, God's Spirit is what helps us understand the truth. You know, that's why he sent it. The other is to comfort us. So those are the two reasons for the Holy Spirit, two jobs of the Holy Spirit. So if I'm with someone over a period of time, I get to know them, and I don't see any conviction, and I don't see any comfort, I got to believe the Spirit's not there. Because the Spirit's the only thing that brings conviction. Mm -hmm. it, it, God's Spirit is the only thing that does that, in my opinion. So <laughs> if we're going to live in the truth, we have to look at the evidence and honestly receive it. So we look at somebody who's denying reality, who's pushing everybody back. The, we, there's a mountain of evidence of their behavior. And there's this little bitty speck of hope. <laughs> but which one do we live in? We live in the speck of hope because we don't want to deal with the facts of the evidence. Because, because that's going to disrupt a relationship. Let me ask you this while <clears> I take a break. But is it because it's so messy yes. that I don't even think God can fix that? So let's figure out a way to start and start over on my terms. Yes, and <clears throat> it's messy, and I don't know what will happen. I might lose the relationship. I might be wrong. There's all kinds of doubt that comes up. But, it, but without that confrontation, without that conviction, nothing changes, except it gets worse. I mean, how many situations have you and I seen over time uh -huh. where we can see it? Marriages, leadership in churches, mm -hmm. businesses, children. 
because we don't have the will and I would say the faith to lovingly involve ourselves. Not try to control, not, not throw a weight around. I'm talking about, like Jesus, intervene with the truth and trust God for the outcome. All right, we're talking about living with lies uh, and living with the truth. And uh, I realize this is going to be extremely sensitive. If you want to join the conversation, you're welcome to do that. Uh, the local number, 541-776-5368, or toll free outside the immediate area, and that's outside of the Medford area, toll free one 800 373-5368. By the way, if you want to remain anonymous, we'll certainly respect that as well. Give us a call. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paulina, and I work at the Deaf TV. Did you know that when you support the Deaf TV, you have a profound impact, not only in our community, but around the world? It's your continued support that takes the inspiration and hope in the programs we produce and makes them available to the thousands of people who are watching these videos online every week. Help bring encouragement and hope to our valley and beyond by making a secure online donation today at our website, thedove.us. Okay, we're continuing on with Patrick Doyle and a subject that I think it's sooner or later, one way or the other, uh, if we're dead honest with ourselves and we want to be clean before the Lord, we wrestle with this topic, and that's living with a lie or living with the truth, and what do we do with it and without it? compiling mm -hmm. and becoming self-perpetuating mm -hmm. uh, to a mess. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to join the conversation, you're welcome to do that. The local number in and around Medford is 541-776-536 or toll free. If you're outside the immediate area, you're more than welcome to join us at 1-800-373-5368. And if you want to remain anonymous, uh, we'll certainly respect that as well. We understand that. You know, um, all right. What even compound? Let's, let's get into it messier, and then we'll come back out and okay. fix it a little okay. bit. But it, I've dealt with this in ministry leadership, uh -huh. where there's been some obvious issues mm -hmm. that has been steamrolled by ego and arrogance. Mm -hmm. And I always walk away with one thing. I go, God, how in the world can this be allowed in leadership? Yeah. What? What? What happens? Right. What, when does the board become desensitized mm -hmm. that the leaders got problems? Mm -hmm. You know, because mm -hmm. um, if you're not careful, your compassion to help and restore right. gets replaced with anger and frustration. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, everybody gets hurt. Yeah. It's real messy. Exactly. But this is not uncommon today. No, no. And, you know, it's my belief that the worst kind of denial is spiritual denial. Um, I've talked to so many people over the years from the church, different, you know, not necessarily leaders, but just people that are Christians, who are rationalizing their sin using the Bible. Oh, boy. And, <clears throat> you know, so the guy who I dealt with a while back, you know, you know, who's reading the Bible three hours a day and praying an hour a day, as confirmed by his wife. I mean, this, he's really doing this. But you know what else he was doing? Molesting his daughter. So I don't really care if you're reading the Bible three hours a day or 12 hours a day or every day, all day. If your behavior is doing something that egregious, it, it, there's something wrong with you. There's no way that you're hearing from God and continuing to do that at that level. So that's an extreme example. And I say that to make people go, oh, you can do that? Yeah. And then you march that back to something that's not quite as bad. Maybe guys that are, you know, flirtatious uh, all the time with other women, or maybe guys who are got a secret life that no one knows about. Maybe guys who are in a marriage and they're, <clears throat> they're self-righteous, and maybe a woman who's, you know, self-righteous to her husband, or v either way. Uh, <clears throat> but it does not reflect the nature of God. God is not self-righteous. He's loving. He's not uh, in denial. <laughs> He's full of truth. That's, that's what we're supposed to emulate, right? And so... Do I have the faith, the, the trust in God to be with me to walk into a difficult circumstance? And, you know, it's my, it's my belief that a pound, I mean, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Mm -hmm. If we would just be a little preventative in these things, we could stop the big gnarly mess at the end. But it requires me to have courage along the way. And so what would happen in our lives day to day, Perry, if we acted on those those instincts, 
and somebody said something we're like mm, that seems a little weird and then I go to them later you know we we're talking I was a little bit bothered by that what was going on with you well I don't got time for that I got stuff to do you know I don't want to deal with it. what I was just probably this is probably the pizza I ate I don't know mm. I don't want to look at it I don't want to deal with it and then it happens again and I build a little more denial and before long I don't trust the person but I'm not saying that right I just, I just keep putting distance between me and them. So what I'm doing is I'm allowing them to continue in their ways, which are probably not good, and I'm not loving them by saying something. Now, let's say I some, say something, they're like, man, get off my back. There's nothing wrong with me. What should I do then? <laughs> well, maybe you should realize that person's not safe and you shouldn't have a relationship with them. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe they go, you know, I don't want to be like that. And they repent. And then you, you actually start to develop some more healthy connection. But if we never say anything, we're one of the vehicles God wants to use to reveal the truth to each other. All right. Um, let's help some leaders in ministry just for a moment. Okay. All right. You do get tired of constantly being criticized. Yes. I mean, yeah. it's fatiguing. Yes. I know. You know, I get off the show. <laughs> yeah. I have 25, 30 emails uh -huh. telling me I should have said it this way, yep. should have said it this mm -hmm. way. Right. And if I don't correct those things or respond, to them, then the next email that comes is, well, uh, then you're really not a Christian. Your yeah. theology's wrong. Right. And and, it goes, and mm -hmm. I'm not complaining about me. I mean, this goes on down. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've had pastors on the show. They've been bleeding in my office. They bleed in your office. Yes. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, you are wore out. Mm-hmm. From trying to live this perfect life yeah. that everybody thinks you ought to live. Which is why I think we should be honest instead of living the perfect life. You know what? Maybe my theology is off. Let's have a conversation about it. You know what? Maybe I should have said it differently. I, I feel really convicted that, that, that that's what the best I could do at the moment. It was live TV. I don't know. <laughs> you, you know, I mean, it's not like you're perfect. Not like I'm perfect. I'm going to make mistakes. I think we should be have a more open environment within the church about that stuff rather than the critical environment. Because when somebody's criticizing me, it's not generally because they, they love me, it's because they want me to do it differently. They want me to do it in a way that makes them feel better, which, which is a sign of where they're at. Okay, right, exactly. Okay, so how do I handle that? Like, you know, I can, I can <laughs> like the Matrix, you know, the guy shoots at you and you, just, you move out of the way of the bullet. <laughs> um, because sometimes that's what it is. Some people can't be satisfied. If I'm having a conversation with someone and I, and I sense that in them, that the only thing that's going to satisfy them is me saying yes to everything they say. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you ever talked to somebody like that? Uh, yeah. I have. And so what do I do? I'm like, I recognize it for what it is. And I say, you know, I appreciate your feedback. I disagree with you. And I move on. And it sits there uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because right. you can't resolve that. But then there's been times where somebody will say something and it is a zinger and yeah. you know it's true. Yes. Absolutely. What's your responsibility with that? Uh, Repent. Repent and, and accept responsibility for your actions. Th that's what gives us freedom. That's what allows us not to have Satan's the father of lies. The things that keep people up at night are not thoughts about how great they are. <laughs> I don't lose sleep about how great I am. Mm -hmm. I just fall right to sleep and I feel great. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you sleep nine, ten hours a day. <laughs> yeah. right? um, so what's wrong with me when I only operate for four hours? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, when, I, when my mind is on fire at night, yeah. it's because of all these unresolved things, yeah. right? And so if I'm rehearsing the truth of what God says, the gospel, he knows all about my thoughts. He knows all about my actions. He knows everything. And he's saying, son, I accept you. I love you. I'm working on it. I'm going to make sure you get to heaven with me. Don't worry. I'm with you. I'm going to take care of you. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, I have, I have a kind of a duplicitous response to that. I really want it to be true. But I have fear. I have anxiety. I have hopelessness. I have, you know, I have situations that seem out of control. I, I feel like maybe I'm wrong. All that stuff's spinning in my mind. If I live in the truth, you know what, God? I want to do what's right by you. I want to respond to you. Help me to convict, c confess my sin and help me to understand the truth from your perspective. And if I wrong that person, okay, I'm going to go to them. I'm going to ask for forgiveness and I'm going to repent and I'm going to make amends where I, where I need to. <sighs> Suddenly, my life starts to feel a lot less pressure. And so one of the things that I learned in AA that I think was one of the most beautiful things about recovery is that, you know, the first three steps have to do with you understanding you're out of control, that you're unmanageable, that you're not the greatest power in the universe, and then there's a power greater than you, i.e. God, that you need to go to to keep you from going under. 
right? That's the first three steps. And the fourth step is made a searching and fearless moral inventory. Mm -hmm. Well, how many times do we talk about that from the pulpit? That what, what have you done that have destroyed people around you? Not what have they done? What have you done? You make a searching, fearless, moral inventory, and then you go and make amends, except for where to do so would cause greater harm. That's why people in recovery from addiction start to live more healthily because they deal with all the stuff that's chasing them. Mm -hmm. They don't let it keep chasing them. But in the church, when we use spiritual denial to say, oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, God's okay with it. Oh, you know, that person... You can, whatever kind of denial you use, you're going to end up in the same place. No peace, feeling chased, your mind on fire, and unable to be open with people because you have to protect yourself so they don't find out. All right. Uh, if you want to join the conversation here, ask any questions, be a part of it. Uh, the phone number is 541-776-5368. That's the local number in and around the immediate Medford area. And then toll free, if you're listening up and down the coast, Northern California, Klamath Falls, or watching on Roku, uh, or any of the other cable channels, give us a buzz. Toll free 1 800 373 5368. All right, we have a call. Hi, ma'am. Uh, welcome to the program. What's your question today? Hello. Yeah. I, I'll try to make this as short as I can. Kay. I had, um, I guess you would say, falling out with a friend last October. And it, it came to me as a complete supply, surprise. Mm -hmm. And it was a silly little thing, which they generally are. But I had told her husband that I would do something and give him something. And twice uh, within two to three weeks, unbeknownst to what I had told her husband, she told me she didn't want this particular item. Mm -hmm. So then I was faced with a quandary that I had given my word to mm -hmm. her husband that I would do so. Mm. So I went to her one day and I, I talked to her privately and asked, tried to t reason with her that I had promised him that I would do this, and I knew that she didn't want it. She blew up in my face, mm -hmm. and so I, I made myself stay there and talk to her calmly. Mm -hmm. Well, I left to figure it was all over with and went back to her home the next day, and she would barely talk to me and wouldn't mm -hmm. tell me what the problem was. Mm -hmm. And she says, I don't want any reasons, excuses, or analyzing. So right there, she completely cut me off from having any communication with her. So mm -hmm. I apologize for maybe bad timing or whatever the case was. Mm -hmm. Now, I was just a friend that I had been for 15 to 20 years. And in those 15 to 20 years, I have seen her go through approximately six to seven friendships mm -hmm. where she would come to me and spill all of this stuff about what these people would do, and I would always try to point her back to the Bible mm -hmm. and to go talk with them directly, and always wondered, could it ever happen to us? And which <laughs> apparently it did. So now here's my quandary. I want to go talk to her. Mm -hmm. She will speak to me, but very coldly. Mm -hmm. I felt God has been pulling me back each time I wanted to go over there because there started to be a little bit of anger on my part that mm -hmm. she could treat a friend in this manner. Right. And then I've even wondered, should I go to the church over such a silly thing and mm -hmm. ask for another person to uh, be an intermediary mm -hmm. just so good... that there would be a communication there? Right. Good, good questions. Good questions. What do you think? Well, first I would say this. You, you said that you were getting a little bit angry, and I just want to take this opportunity to talk about something I think that's true about anger is that anger is the thing that comes to the surface, but just below anger is hurt, and just below hurt is injustice. So if we don't get to the injustice, we don't ever, we're not able to resolve the anger. Okay, and then, and then you said there's a pattern here, and then there's a shutdown of communication. She doesn't want to have deep communication. She doesn't want to go back there. She wants to move past it without talking about it. Would that be accurate? Yes. Okay, so how can you force her to talk about it? I've been praying about it, and I, I figured that God would give me the right timing and that I should just wait. I agree with that, but here's the deal. You can't make her want to deal with it. Okay. So you have to accept the consequences of her decision, which is, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to go there. Secondarily, if you feel like she's like she shut you down and unwilling to, to <laughs> deal with the issue... That's right. a, those are behaviors of someone who is unsafe. One of, the, one of the key elements of safety 
is people being willing to accept responsibility for their, for their behavior, which I hear in what you're saying. So that I don't, I hear a pattern on the other side where there's not a willingness to accept responsibility or work through the difficulty. And so what we okay. have to accept is that reality. Do I want it to be different? Do I want the relationship to work? Do I want to be close? Sure. But you have no control over that. So my avenue is actually prayer and, and just allowing God mm -hmm. to work through mm -hmm. it. Because I even thought if I went to the church, I thought it would cause her mm -hmm more damage yeah. in the long run by bringing this up right. and she would feel embarrassment and whatnot. That's, so. good, that's good wisdom, particularly when she's saying, I don't want to. So if you say, let's go to, the, or I go to the church without your permission, you just drug her into a situation she told you she didn't want to be in. She doesn't want to deal with it. Is, but, isn't but that cool. what you're hearing? Yes. Then yes, say, entirely. Then say, do you have to accept that and be like, that's not what I want. And if God provides an opportunity, I'm ready to move. But until he moves on her, you're just pushing a rock uphill. And I promise you, it'll roll back on you. Well, I, <laughs> okay, I really appreciate your, your okay. advice. The comment I thought I would make, um, giving the first opportunity, is to just ask her if she was ready to talk yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All I right. think that's great. Offering that opportunity is a wonderful thing, but don't push it. Okay. All right. Thank Th you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, we're going to take a quick break. If you want to join the conversation, the phone number is 541-776-5368 or toll-free, and it's 1-800-373-5368. And if you want to remain anonymous, we'll certainly respect that as well. We'll be right back with Patrick Doyle in just a few moments. Hi, I'm Dan and I work at the Dove TV. You know, compared to Portland, Seattle, and LA, Medford might be considered a small market, but at The Dove, we're excited about the opportunity to make a big impact right here in our community. And you help make that happen. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us now by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or by phoning 541-776-5368. Okay, we're back, and you're more than welcome to join the conversation. Today we're talking about living uh, with lies, or living with the truth. And uh, if you'd like to join us, the phone number is 541-776-5368, or toll-free, 1-800-373-5368. Um, before we move on, I think this last call set up something that's interesting. We as believers want to do the right thing. Yeah. You know? And we want a godly outcome. Mm -hmm. Can we be too pushy with that? Yep. I think absolutely. I think sometimes what we do is we push toward an outcome that we want and deny the truth in front of us. <laughs> okay. Um, and that is the other person doesn't want to cooperate. So what yep. do you do with that? Yeah, you let it sit. You know, you say what you need to say and you trust God for the outcome. Instead of, if you keep coming at somebody who said they don't want it, their resentment's going to build, and you're going to lose any opportunity that you might have to be a vehicle of God, because they're just going to shut you out for being so selfish, right? But we're doing it from, well, I, but, I, but I want the right thing. Well, wanting the right thing is fine, but if you're doing something harmful to get the right thing, mm. you're, gonna, you're not going to get there. And so we have to step back and can we trust God to let it sit? Mm -hmm. I mean, because I don't want this thing unresolved. Well, tough. You don't have control of it. I don't have control of other people. And that's, that's one of the things that I think is hard, is that I see so many situations, Perry, I'm like, how come God doesn't get involved? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it seems to me like if he would just convict him, everything would be better. But I've seen over time that he has a very definite timing. And I don't know why things happen the way they do. I don't know why he has the timing he does, but I do know he's working. And my job is to obey him, right? Not fix them. And so, uh, if I'm to love them, sometimes that takes the form of saying, I accept your, your boundary. I accept that you don't want to go there. I care about you. And if you want to talk about it, let me know. Um, or sometimes it's taking the risk to say, you know, this bothers me. I don't know what to do about this. So, it could go either way. That's why it's so important to be able to take some uh, time and let the Spirit speak to you instead of you following an agenda. How many times have, we, have you been in a situation, I've been in a situation where somebody has an agenda 
and the agenda takes precedence over everything else. And if you get in the way of the agenda, they'll run you over. Mm -hmm. And when you're when you're someone's agenda, that's not loving. Yeah, because that's about them, not about you. And you know, Jesus said, "Look, I only do what the Father says. Your needs, whatever. That's not what motivates me." What motivates me is what the Father says. That's our example. What's God saying to me? And so here's where a lot of people get a little nervous because, well, how do I know what God is saying? How do I discern that? Well, I think, A, you have to understand what he, what he has said in his revelation, i.e. the scriptures of who he is. You have to understand some of that. I'd say that sometimes you need to ask somebody you trust about your instincts. What do you think about this? So you're not doing this in a vacuum, right? But that requires time. It requires energy. It requires me to have to get involved. And most of us want to drive in the garage. The garage door goes down, and we don't have to deal with it. All right. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, 541-776-5368 or toll-free 1-800-373-5368. You know, I'll never forget interviewing Jim Baker. Mm. And, um, of course, for those who don't know who he is, he had the, the, the PTL club. and It was mm -hmm. a huge... Mm -hmm hundreds of millions of dollar ministry that come crashing down. And the short part of this story is that he's, he looked at me after I asked him and I said, Jim, how did this happen? Mm -hmm. You know, we were sitting on a couch in a hotel room talking. Uh -huh. And uh, he, he, he said, I'll never forget his answer. He said, you know, Perry, 95% of my life was in order. But the five percent that I concealed from God, so to speak, <laughs> and yeah, and thought that God and I had this special arrangement yes. over, mm -hmm. that He wasn't zapping. I knew it was wrong. He wasn't zapping me on it. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's okay. You know, right. I never gave it to Him. Mm -hmm. Brought that whole thing come crashing down, and mm -hmm. He actually went to prison. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> uh, that's an extreme extreme case, but it is happening out there. Yes. And my question to you would be is the person who's struggling with that 5%, mm -hmm. uh, they know something is not quite right. Mm -hmm. They know that they're not mm -hmm. coming truthful to themselves and to mm -hmm. before the Lord. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Well, if, if you have that kind of doubt, first thing I would do is I would spend some time with God and ask for conviction. God would convict me. Help me to see this. Then I would go to somebody that I trust. And I would say, hey, I'm struggling with this. What do you think? I'm telling you this. I've heard it so many times, Perry, from people. My healing didn't start until the, the words of my confession came out. You can confess it to God internally all day long, and that's great. But until you confess it to another soul, we confess our sins one to another. That's what he said. James 5. Why? Well, because that's how healing starts. Because as soon as it gets in the light, a whole bunch of emotion starts. You keep it inside, and when you keep stuff inside, you can rationalize, you can minimize, you can justify. But when I look you in the eye and I say, hey, Perry, this is what I'm doing, <laughs> suddenly my, my power to rationalize is diminished <laughs> because you're there to say, well, wait a minute, man, what about this or how about that? And I've walked hundreds of people, Perry, through difficult sin. I know people can change. I've also seen people absolutely not be willing. What do you do with that? You leave it alone. I grieve. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, the scripture is pretty clear. I think it's in Corinthians, it talks about they hear and see and know the truth, but they choose not to uh, yeah. respond to it. Yeah. I don't understand all that, but I do know it's real. All right. Uh, the phone number again, 776-5368, if you want to join the conversation. Hi, ma'am. Thanks for calling in. Uh, what's your question today? Hi there. Um, I've got a sister who, when we were in college, there was an incident that happened, and... Um, it was covered up by my sister and my mother, and it, they said it was a, um, that my sister had had a kidney issue. Well, years later, I mean, this is 50 years later, I honestly believe that it was an abortion that she had. Mm. And that she um, and my mom, she's protecting my mom, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it's really it's not a subject I don't know how to broach with her but I feel like it's really hindering her walk with the Lord. Mm. And I know what freedom comes when you do the confession part, yeah. and I don't know how to help her. I don't know how to approach this. Well, well lim, lim, uh, yeah, can you, your question is, I don't know how to help her. The question I always ask is, can you? 
Hello. Yeah. Yeah. The question I would ask is, can you help her? I don't know. Um, we are pretty close. If you brought it up, been, if you brought it up, what would she say? I think she would um, try to protect my mother, mm -hmm. and because of that, I think she would uh, maybe not admit to it. Mm -hmm. So, if your relationship has enough trust in it, I would I would have you pray about sitting down and having a conversation with her and saying, you know, this is what I believe. And if you don't want mom to know that I know, that's fine. I'll keep it between you and me, but I'm concerned for you and what it's doing to you. Okay. And, but you have to understand here, one of the things you're risking is the relationship. Yeah. And I know you probably are going to know that. And, and that's why I believe it has to be a conviction level decision. You can't be doing it to be a do-gooder or to, you know, be helpful. You have to be convicted by God to move in that direction. And, um, and I think there's a lot of damage that happens when we do it because we think it needs to happen. Well, you know, I'm not God. I don't know. <laughs> so you got to be sensitive to him. But obviously, it's, he's not letting it go for you. <laughs> it's still <laughs> there. And um, so I would really pray about going to her and saying it, maybe even writing down what you're going to say so that you don't get off script uh -huh. and uh, because it's so emotional it, be, it might be hard to get through it without going on side trails which I think could be very damaging not intentionally but just because you're struggling to get it out um, and go with a prepared statement and read it to her and say I want to I want to talk to you about this and if you want to keep it a secret from mom fine okay okay uh, what about writing it and sending it to her but then still I would, I, I would want to be present with her when she reads it because you're okay. going to get a lot of information from her face and her body language about what's really going on. And it also is more uh, caring. Uh, a letter might feel a little bit like an indictment to her. Ah, okay. Okay. When you're there, okay. she'll, she, when you're there, she'll see the love in your eyes. When you send her a letter with a distance, it might not work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me take a quick break. Our phone number is 541-776-5368 or toll free 1-800-373-5368. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Paula and I work at the Dove TV. Every day we get letters and emails from people who've been encouraged, blessed, and challenged by the programs on the Dove TV. But we couldn't do it without you. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to bring inspiration and hope to our community by making a secure online donation at our website, thedove.us, or call us at 541-776-5368. All right, we're back with uh, Patrick Doyle, and uh, the topic today is living with a lie or living with the truth. And, uh, as simple as those little titles seem, they're very impacting. Yeah. And if you want to join the conversation, um, toll free 1-800-373-5368 or the immediate area is 541-776-5368. And you're more than welcome to uh, remain anonymous. All right, let's go back to the phones because then we have some closing comments. Hi, Kurt. Thanks for your patience. Uh, how can we help you today? Good morning, Patrick. Hi, Kurt. I just wanted to confirm what you said about the need to confess out loud. Mm. <clears throat> I had a uh, secret sexual addiction for 35 years. Wow. I was a professing uh, Christian sitting in the pews, of course, a uh, false convert for 20 years. Mm. And it wasn't until I sat in your office and confessed out loud the first person of, uh, of my sins and later uh, repented. I turned. Um, mm. it, my <clears throat> transformation then took place, my conversion. Wow. And that was uh, four years ago. Wow. What's and happened? My life has uh, never been the same since. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Thanks, Kurt, for Thanks sharing. Thanks for your testimony, Kurt. I've got to tell yeah. you, I, want, I don't want you to feel alone because I know there's hundreds of guys out in the church feeling exactly what you felt four years ago. And it's good for other guys to hear that there's hope that if you confess, it doesn't mean your life's going to completely end, which is what we think. But once we start confessing, our life actually starts to get better. And we start to actually have some peace instead of all that uh, hurt and loss. So I really appreciate that. I'm glad to hear that things are going well for you. 
Uh, amen. Thank you. Um, That's great. All right. So what brings us to that point that Kurt got to? 20 years and... Lies, denial, rationalizing. But he puts it all in line and says, all right, mm-hmm. I, I may be starting my life over, so... Right. You know. I, I don't know anything that motivates somebody to put themselves in that kind of harm's way aside from God convicting them. You know, I don't... And and the thing that puzzles me, Perry, is that there's I don't know there's no I can't control conviction. Mm-hmm. I wish I could. I mean, I could save the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, be. but you know, if people would con- confess and repent, everything would be fine. Because listen, intimate relationships, healthy intimate relationships, are the result of confession and forgiveness, not togetherness. Last I checked, everybody on the planet is a sinner. Mm-hmm. So, the, you know, we're to confess our sins one to another. Okay, so I sin every day, but I'm only confessing once a year. <laughs> I'm leaving a few things out. Right. My confession should be very consistent. And that is where we start living in the truth. When we're not confessing on a regular basis, I guarantee you, you're going to be living in denial. You're going to be rationalizing. You're going to be minimizing. You're going to be protective. And this is not the life that God wants for us. It's not. And, you know, I think of the example in, in, in Scripture when, when uh, Paul goes and confronts Peter. Peter was, you know, distancing himself from the Gentiles when the Jews would come around. And... Paul got right up in his grill and said, what are you doing? How can you do that? That's, wait a minute. And, you know, for Paul to say that, that's like, really? This guy who was killing people for, so for him to like stand up for the Gentiles was, you know, (laughs) a big deal. But he didn't let it go. This is not okay, Peter. You can't do this. So everybody's better off because we get the truth on the table. Paul didn't disown Peter because he was wrong. Peter repented and he, he, but there are people that we will deal with, Perry, that will not repent. Yeah, I, uh, I think that's part of the discussion before we run out of time I wanted you to kind of deal with because yeah. as much as we want to help and as much as we want to see things change, mm-hmm. um, when you've bumped into somebody who refuses to mm-hmm. uh, accept what you're saying, even if it's done in genuine love yes, and absolutely. conviction, right. but if they re- are rejecting that, mm-hmm. uh, what's our role then? Well, I think our role is much like what Paul encouraged the Corinthians to do in uh, chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians. You got this guy who's sleeping with a stepmother, and Paul writes and says, look, what are you doing? Why are you tolerating this? Get this guy and confront him. If he doesn't repent, kick him out. And that's what happened, because the guy didn't repent. And he was, Paul was, was correcting the church for tolerating it. And they were all proud of themselves because they were being gracious. And what Paul is saying, you're not being gracious to this man or this woman by allowing them to destroy themselves. Mm -hmm. So then in the second Corinthian letter, Paul, evidently this guy repented. And then Paul says to him, now look, he's repented. Don't hold him out. Don't put guilt on him. Let him back in. He repented. He changed. So if somebody's unwilling to repent, we have to be willing to sever the relationship. We don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. We want it to be nice. We want it to be pleasant. We don't want there to be ruffled feathers. We don't, people, we don't want people to not come to the church. We don't want dis- discord. But listen, if you don't draw a line, you are going to continue to take the abuse because they're not going to change. So it's, it, here's the other thing. The most loving thing we could do is help them have a consequence. Yeah. Because I've never seen anybody change, Perry, because they were comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> I've never changed anything else I was comfortable. Yeah. It's when the pain comes and I'm like, okay, I'm looking for another option. And so that's actually loving. So I see this all the time. You know, somebody's about to hit, hit the floor and, and, and hurt. And right before they hit, we slide a mattress under them mm. to make it nice and soft. Well, you know what that does? It prolongs their, their, their ability to deny. If we let the pain hit, we're actually giving them a gift. But we've been taught in various ways that our job is to, to, re, to relieve pain. Well, I would say many times to relieve the pain, you got to first give some. Like, like Kurt's testimony. Mm-hmm. You know, all those years I sat in church and I listened to sermons and I was 
I was completely another person. No one knew. It was all internal. And then the Lord convicted him and he confessed. And, you know, I know that wasn't easy and I know there were consequences. I know there were consequences when I confessed my porn addiction. I know that there were difficult relationships. There were things, but that was all part of God's healing of me. Me staying in the lie is what was killing me. But I could have told you very convincingly that I was fine. <laughs> what do we do? Um, it, it, you started this whole topic off with having a feeling or an intuition yes. or an instinct that something yes. is not right. Right. How do you qualify those feelings? Well, uh, like I said, it helps to be very... To, this is why I really want people to be... Uh, intimately familiar with the scriptures. I really think that y you have to be intimately familiar with who God is, how he operates, because that'll help give you some clarity. The other thing is, is a lot of times you got to check it with somebody you know, somebody you trust, somebody who has wisdom, not somebody who's, you know, demonstrated, you know, unhealthy behavior, somebody who's, you know, shallow and <laughs> self-centered. I'm talking about somebody who has demonstrated over time wisdom that you've seen from a distance. You know that person has wisdom. I would go to them and say, I'm sensing this, I'm feeling this. And if they say, well, yeah, yeah, you take that in. But as long as that stuff remains, at some point, you got to act on it. And that is when you'll really know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And have I ever acted on my intuition and be wrong? Yeah. Yeah, I have. I've yeah. been dead wrong. Yeah. Uh, and and I. But but the beautiful even worse. <laughs> but the beautiful thing about being a believer is that if I do that, I can repent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not about me doing it right. It's about me be willing to own my own my stuff. So if I if I go with the best information I have and I move forward in love and I'm wrong, I'm glad to admit I'm wrong. Hey, my my mistake. I misread that. Okay, sorry. Now what? Now we still have a relationship, but if I don't say anything, it really jumbles me up. Because now I'm reading that person weird, and I'm always, I got all these filters going on, I got all this mental gymnastics happening, and I'm not myself around them. So might as well get it over with, might as well get it out. And see, I think in that, we will see the face of God over and over and over again. When I keep it all inside, I miss a lot of opportunity to see who He is. And I think, uh, you know, if, if, you know, when we love another person, we actually see the face of God. Yeah. Uh, the, the old saying is, you can't change someone until you first love them. Yeah. You and, know, and I, yeah. And I don't think I can make myself love somebody. Yeah. That's God's gift to me. And so, you know, when somebody is means enough to me to take the risk, I will. All right. Uh, this isn't fair, but put the shoe on the other foot real quickly. <laughs> okay. You come to me and you have an intuition about me and you're totally wrong. Uh-huh. And I tell you that. Right. Um, now what? <laughs> now what? Well, I mean, from my perspective, you just meddled into something, and now mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I can trust you. Because right. Because you snooped mm -hmm. around in an area that's not true. Right, exactly. So if my repentance is genuine, you'll know that and go, well, that guy really stepped in it, and he owned it. And so I'm going to trust him. Okay. But, if, but if I step in it, and I'm like, oh, well, because, and yada, yada, and I back up, and I, and I don't really own it, you'll know that. And then you'll be a little distant with me because you're like, well, that guy's a little bit dangerous. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. If I'm living in a state of truth, if I'm living in the truth, I'll repent when I'm wrong. Not Maybe not immediately, but I'll get there. Okay? And I think that is what keeps us in safety. That's what keeps us in the truth is the spirit of conviction. That's what God sent the spirit to do was to convict us so we would know right from wrong. We don't already internally know. We need his help to know. Patrick Doyle, Veritas Counseling, and uh, the number over there to your office? 622-6018. 622-6018, that's area code 541, mm -hmm. and... Uh, or you could go to the website. Go to the website, Veritas. VeritasCounseling.com. Dot com. All right, so give Patrick a call and uh, talk to Renee and see if you can get in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Right. Thanks for watching. You bet. Hi, I'm Jim and I work at the Dub TV. Every weekday between 6 and 8 a.m., our award-winning news and sports team bring you the best morning show around. It's live, it's honest, and it's a whole lot of fun. And you help make it happen. Did you know that more than 90% of our income comes from people like you? You can help us continue to air local programs that share your voice by making a secure online donation at our website, thedub.us.